This video training is being brought to you by SQL Server 2014 Tutorial.com. My name is Cash Mughal. Today we are going to be looking at SQL Server Management Studio, which is also known as SSMS. So let's jump right into it. So, like I mentioned, what is SSMS? Well, it stands for SQL Server Management Studio. If you have been working or maybe you're new to SQL, we use uh, quite a few acronyms in here just to you know keep things a little bit uh, I guess shorthand and whatnot. So as far as the management studio, really, it is a uh, SQL 2014 database management tool uh, for DBAs. DBA by the mean by the way means database administrators. So not only uh, you know you can manage administration. In addition, this is also a database development environment. For any SQL 2014 developers, okay. Within the SSMS, you can manage all uh, database level functions. So this would be, you know, creating a database, maybe uh, creating a table, stored procedures, views, whatnot. And we are going to look at that uh, in a little bit. But I'm just covering this at a high level. In addition, you can also monitor SQL Server activity. Uh, so things like, you know, who is logged into the server, what uh, query are they running. And you can also look at SQL Server logs. In addition, you can set up high availability solutions, including uh, availability group and also replication and some of the other um, you know options that are still available in SQL. And finally, you can you can uh, you know administrate uh, SQL Server agent jobs and executions within. SSMS. So quite a few things you can do. Uh, it is really you know one-stop shop for SQL Server. Okay. Uh, before I do that, I just want to make sure I am recording. <clears throat> so as far as you know, SSMS components, there's quite a few of them, and I just basically what I did was I wanted to highlight the main ones. Okay. So what we're going to do is we are actually going to start with the registered servers, and then uh, kind of go clockwise. And uh, cover them one by one. So, and we, you know, we will dig deeper into them. But so, registered servers is where we'll start. Then we'll move on to Object Explorer. In fact, we're going to spend most of the time in this video on that. Then we will go to Query Window. We will look at two important uh, DBA tools, which is Profiler and uh, Database Engine Tuning Advisor, or Data, Data, like PETA. And then finally, we will look at the template browser, also known as uh, template explorer in some places. So, so that is really our agenda today. So let's go ahead and get started with uh, you know registered servers. Now, this is really a place where you can register SQL servers, and you can also create groups of servers. Like let's say, uh, you know, in a typical um, enterprise, you'll have production systems, stage systems, and development servers. You can, uh, you know, create logical groups and then put your servers in them. Not only that, you can provide user-friendly names, which are also known as aliases for SQL servers. Um, you know, you can you can use the server actual server name, or you can call it, you know, by by an application. Let's say you're running um, Metronic something. You could call it Metronic One, Metronic Two. Um, you can also within registered servers export and import list of servers so this is very handy let's say you know you are running 20 30 40 servers in your environment and you have them all set up on a server and then you add another server instead of you know redoing all the work you can simply export the list and then uh, import it on the target server very handy definitely <clears throat> next um, you can also do some custom settings uh, within the registered servers. This is really to help you differentiate between environments like prod and development. Okay. Now you do have the ability to run the same query on multiple servers from registered servers. This is also useful. Let's say you are trying to deploy, um, I don't know, maybe the same table across multiple servers um, in development. Instead of going to one server and running it, going to another server running it, you could do that all in one shot. Okay. So those are the some of the highlighted points under registered servers. I'm going to actually uh, show you a demo. Uh, this way, it, this way, it, you can actually see this in action, and you don't have to uh, listen to my lecture the whole time. So what I have down here, as you can see, I actually uh, launched uh, the management studio already. Um, if you're new new to SQL Server, 
once you have the installation <clears throat> I just brought my folder here but you'll under all programs you'll see an option for SQL Server 2014 and then within that you will see an option for 2014 Management Studio so that's I'm just going to it's gonna really what it's gonna do is open up another instance okay but uh, while that's happening I will just go here and show you how we can open up registered servers so typically when you log in registered servers shows automatically but I wanna I want to show you in case you've never seen it it would be found under view and then you go to registered servers okay now here <clears throat> you'll notice that I already created a group um, you know I have a development uh, group and I have a this is my server and I'm running a named instance call MS 2014 okay I have another server dev1 and then on production I'm running the um, I guess the the default instance on that machine and under stage we have nothing okay if you wanted to create a group you could simply right click here and say new server group and uh, you know let's say we just call it test okay <clears throat> so that that would show up under here now if you wanted to register a server let's say you're, you're registering a server you would just right click here and select new server registration uh, I'm not going to do that because I already have these uh, uh, servers registered but I will show you um, the properties of these okay so let's let's kinda go through these real quick and in fact what we'll try to do is we'll try to switch the properties so you can kinda see this in action right so we are connecting to the engine here is my server name I'm using SQL Server Authentication, which is one of the ways you can connect to a SQL Server. Here's my name, here's my password, I'm trying to save it. Now here is what I could have done something else. I could have given it, uh, you know, dev3 or something like that. This would be an alias, okay? For now, I'm just going to leave that as is, okay? And then uh, let's move on to connection properties. Now this is where um, some people do that, uh, you know, obviously, visually, if you can see something, it's it's definitely useful. So, um, if you want to make sure that, you know, you're using a different color for, let's say, development versus production, this may come in handy. So, let's, let's do this. We will select use custom color, and then I'm going to select, uh, I don't know, I guess let's go green, okay? <clears throat> and so, what that basically means is that every time I open up a window, using this connection I'm going to see this color which is going to tell you that hey you are working in the development environment that's a good thing to know okay so let's go ahead and save this and then I'm going to do the similar thing in production this is not a true environment obviously because I'm running both these instances on on my machine but uh, you kinda get the gist of it this would be you know um, when you're setting this up in a real deal and you have different servers you would follow the same steps so again I go to connection properties for this one I'm going to use custom color select and I'm going to go how about let's go hot pink <clears throat> okay and then you, you know you could, you could test it if you wanted to you can obviously you know set up other uh, properties in here if you wanted to I'm just going to go ahead and save this okay so so far so good uh, one more thing um, well l let me show you this uh, next okay we are actually going to move on to object explorer but uh, let's say if I wanted to run a query you simply right click on it okay and then you select new query okay now notice this see it opened the query but look at this it gives you that nice little bright green color it's a little uh, too strong. It's not gonna, you know, the other one's gonna be stronger actually. But this is good. It tells you that hey, you are in development environment, so that's good to know. Instead of you know when you're here and you come here and you click new query, now you're gonna get this nice little uh, manly color down here. Okay. So I think this is this is good to know. I mean, uh, I've worked in this area a long time, so I'm always you know before I run any massive query, I always check the instance because notice this one is the default instance by the way this one you can tell is running SQL Server 2012 okay gets 11.0 versus this one which I'm running you know 12.0 RTM okay so that's a little FYI on registered server if you wanted to export this all you would have to do is you would right click here and come down to tasks okay and then export and give it a name 
give it give it a file name right you can you know save it wherever you want it and just I guess you could call it export list or something like that okay uh, I'm not going to do that right now um, but I just wanted to show you and then let's assume that you're in a new server and then you just go right click here and you say tasks and import okay so that's really I think all I wanted to talk about the the registered servers let's move on to the object explorer okay this is by far the most uh, important topic for SSMS this is really the heart of SSMS which is again SQL Server Management Studio in case you already forgot that so let's let's jump into this okay there there are a lot of different things in here so let's just uh, talk about them and then I will show you uh, in a minute I think we have this other thing that opened up so let me just cancel out of this one here we got too many I just I just want to have one instance okay so that's good so anyway um, the object Explorer it's really broken down into se several uh, you know I guess uh, hierarchy tabs the first one is, is databases this is where you can drill down to your system and user databases you're going to be able to work with things like tables views stored procedures and uh, database users next one is security this is you know obviously a very important topic in database uh, management you can do things like creating logins server roles audits and some other uh, items moving on we have the server objects this is where you will see things like backup devices uh, link servers and some other um, items then we have replication which obviously has been you know uh, around forever it's always fun to work with because it's got uh, multiple points of failure but that includes things like publications and subscriptions um, you have the new cool feature that was uh, deployed in uh, 2012 which is the always on high availability then you have the management tab this will include things like uh, you know policy management the resource governor um, SQL Server error logs and whatnot then you have um, uh, the next item is the integration services catalog this is basically where you can create a database you know that deals with all of the SSIS objects okay and then finally we have SQL Server agent so as you can tell quite a few things in here we will uh, we will go through them um, you know again this is gonna be very high level we're gonna have lots of different videos that you know cover topics like security uh, you know high availability management SQL agent we will definitely cover those so today um, my my thought is to just kind of burn through some of these things okay so now how do you get to object explorer well a couple of ways you can do this okay you can right click on your instance and you can say object explorer okay and you just notice it created a, a tab down here another way you can do that is you can go to view and then object explorer this is where by the way you can get to all of your windows in sql server okay 